My latest DVD in the PowerPlay series has just been released. There you go, hopefully you can see that. The King's Gambit. So there's about six hours of material on this DVD. I should say digital download as well. Um, if, you, if you want it just digitally, you, you can have it like that. Um, and I present a repertoire for white with the King's Gambit. Let's put those moves on the board, e4, e5, and f4. Well, I can tell you, I had such fun researching and recording this DVD. Um, I used to play the King's Gambit as a kid. I played it for about four years in my, my teenage years. And, well, I had some success with it. Um, it really does confuse people. <laughs> and it's great for your attacking play. It really does, you know, give you that instinct. Then somehow chess got very serious and I switched over to the Roy Lopez. Um, and that became my great love um, with white. But going back to, to the King's Gambit and researching, you know, I realise that there can be a lot to this opening and it's a great way to trip people up. You know, if you can see that your opponent is looking like one of those people that plays the Berlin variation of the Spanish or just the main line and looks kind of super solid, to hit them with the King's Gambit, now that can really put terror in them. Of course, there are some beautiful old games with the King's Gambit from the 19th century. Um, and I look at some of those on, on the DVD. But what I want to do is show you uh, a really modern day game, bring it right up to that, uh, where white wins in, in great style. So this game is between Ruslan Ponomario, former FIDE world champion, and Lenier Dominguez from Cuba, well, super strong grandmaster now living and playing in the USA. Now it was a blitz game but nevertheless let's just see how the Cuban gets very confused here. So pawn takes pawn, knight f3 and g5. So this is one of the most critical lines I would say because black just supports that pawn on f4. And now you could say the main move is the Kizaritsky. Actually, I don't recommend this on the DVD. Um, I like either knight c3 or d4 here. So Ponomaryov plays d4, fine. And now black plays bishop g7, but we're kind of begging black to play g4 here. Let's just have a very quick look at this. This was played in the game between Fedorov and Adams. Michael Adams, well, England's finest, but after this peace sacrifice, I tell you what, this is not easy for black to defend. This is extremely difficult. I challenge you to try and play that with black. And Michael Adams lost that game against Fedorov, who Fedorov was one of the great exponents of the King's Gambit in, in, uh, in recent years. So anyway, after d4, bishop g7 from Dominguez and d6. So this looks all pretty... Pretty nice. Black is doing all the right things, apparently. And now g3. This really shakes things up. If the pawn is taken, then g5 drops, and, and that's really problematic for black. So g4. Basically, black tries to keep the king's side closed. And, you know, this looks very impressive. A protected pass pawn on f3. But I remember when I was playing this in my younger days, I was always reluctant to go into these positions with white because, you know, I always felt there was the sword of Damocles hanging over my head. Um, and, you know, if I reached an end game, then of course I would lose this with white. But actually looking at a lot of games now, I see that white has the ability to play around those pawns. Actually, this is a very promising position for white. So what white does here is castle on the queen side very quickly. Now this is really nice because we get the king to safety and the king is looking very tidy behind those pawns. So that's really good news. 
And that means that we're free to try and attack on the king side as well. And not to mention the center. So black continues with development, knight e7, and now h3. Well, now that white plays h3, you can see that white wants to break up these pawns. If these pawns can be broken up, then white's attack down the f-file will just be devastating. But also, positionally, white will stand well. Um, just because, you know, the, these, these pawns will be terribly weak, the f-pawn will never to be drop. So black is never going to take on h3, shouldn't take on h3. But then again, that means that castling kingside is just unimaginable for black in this position because then the h file would open and it would just be a storming attack. So black has to think, well, what do I do with the king? It can't live too long in the center. But then again, well, how does it get to the queen side? So clearly we need to move out this bishop, but if bishop e6, then d5 will win a piece. So Dominguez played bishop d7, which is a bit of a weird move, because how does the queen get out? And here the move that I really like for white is to play rook e1, with the idea of knight d5 and knight f5 and bishop g5 in some order. And if the e-file opens, then black's king just gets cut to pieces. This knight on h4 so often comes into the game on f5, um, and this knight comes to d5. Those are the, the key outposts, particularly with the rook on e1. But Ponomarev played another, well, played a very natural king's gambit move, bishop c4, looking at that sensitive spot on f7. But then Dominguez played bishop e6. So this looks a bit strange. Surely white can play pawn to d5. Well, not so good in this case, because then after knight e5, you can see the knight attacks the bishop. And that knight on a glorious post. And if pawn takes, then knight takes. And this turns the tables completely. This is looking tremendous for black, this knight and bishop attacking. So after bishop b6, Ponomarev played knight d5. Well, that's the move we really want to make anyway, because the knight looks at these squares, and you know you can imagine bishop g5 coming soon, and you know a knight f6 check. But queen d7, and now the bishop dropped back to b3. So Dominguez is, you know, trying to get the king to safety. So why didn't Dominguez play Castle's queenside here? He played knight g6, but why not Castle's queenside? Well, in this case, white can take. Now, if knight takes, then the bishop is trapped. And if queen takes, then d5 wins a piece. So let's go back. So after bishop b3, Dominguez played knight g6. He obviously wanted to avoid that. And, you know, he's ready to castle queenside. But then came knight f5. So we've got the knights on these beautiful outposts. The knight on f5 attacking the bishop. So really that had to be eliminated. Bishop takes knight. Pawn takes. But this is a disaster for black. Because the king is going to be caught in the center. Well, I mean, the, if the knight retreats, this pawn to f6 actually wins the bishop. So queen takes pawn. But now, obviously, c7 is on. And But actually, Ponomarev didn't take immediately. He played a far stronger move. Pawn takes pawn. So that if pawn takes, then you can exchange rooks. And only then... Plate knight takes bishop and knight takes rook, and basically white ends up a whole rook up. So Dominguez wanted to keep the h-file closed and played queen takes pawn, but a position this is disastrous because that pawn is now going to be really weak. Um, but also, it's still possible just to fork king and rook. At least this way, black manages to only go and exchange down, but really these pawns are hopelessly weak and the king still in a terrible position. Just compare the two king positions. Queen f2, there's a nice sensible solid move. 
starting to gang up on that pawn and defending the g3 pawn. Black's rook came over, just looking at this bishop, but no big deal. Bishop d5, very nice. Ponomorov now just about to mop, at that, mop up that pawn. Two beautiful bishops. The h pawn is going to drop here after the f pawn. Exchange up, winning initiative. It's it's all looking good for white. But Dominguez managed to commit suicide straight away with the pawn to f5. And then bishop takes pawn, actually trapped black's queen. A very unfortunate end for that queen, which never really found a good post. So there we are. Uh, that just shows you that, you know, even in the modern day, it's possible to play the king's gambit and catch people out because, you know, this position at first glance you think should be nice for black, in fact, gives white a tremendous initiative. So if you want to learn more, then do check out my latest DVD, also available as a digital download, also available not just for PCs, but now available for Macs as well. There you go. Check it out. What do you got to lose? Only your king's bishop pawn. Good luck.